Hello everyone, I'm Corey Andrew with Instinct Magazine and I am thrilled today to be joined by the fabulous Bianca Del Rio, who I dreamt about last night and I thought I had called her Vanessa Del Rio, actually, <laughs> by mistake, who was a porn star in the 70s, but with her razor sharp wit, irreverent humor, and show-stopping costumes and that fabulous eye makeup, Bianca is getting ready for her new comedy tour called Dead Inside, where she will be fearlessly tackling politics, pop culture, and everything in between. Bianca, thanks for joining Instinct Magazine today. Well, thank you for having me. You know, I go back to the day. I mean, I remember seeing Instinct Magazine and going, oh, look at those pretty boys on the cover. Mm -hmm. But I yeah. wasn't gay. I wasn't gay. I wasn't gay <laughs> at all. Must, right. Trust, trust, trust me. I know. I see. Uh -huh. I guess it kind of like, well, I don't want to say like Republican gay. That's when you're sort of like, you just tap a foot under a bathroom stall. But that's a whole oh, other show. But but that's a different thing. But also they're like an asshole too who hate themselves. You know, that's a whole nother <laughs> That's ball. a whole other show. That's when we come, we'll bring you back for that convo. Let's talk. Yeah, um, let's talk. Well, as, speaking of let's talk, it's funny. Uh, I wanted to ask you one of my own questions. I thought really what I wanted to talk to you about first was, what's it like for you being referred to as the Joan Rivers of drag? Well, first and foremost, that's a huge compliment. I mean, I was a huge fan of Jones and I, I often wish that she was here. Well, very often wish that she was here just to see what she'd have to say about the world at this particular time, because some mm -hmm. crazy shit is going on. Yeah. And we also live in a world now where everybody is a little sensitive. And I know a lot of comedians say that, that people say, oh, it's sensitive, it's sensitive. I have, sensitivity is lying there and I guess that's okay. But also we live in a world where everybody don't mind their goddamn business. Mm -hmm. If you don't like this bitch or what she's got to say, you don't have to listen to it. Yeah. It's very, very simple. Mm -hmm. But no, everything becomes comparison. Everything becomes what we think is right for us and for them. And that's not how this works. You live your life as you choose to live. And if you like Beyonce and you don't like Taylor Swift, do what you want to do. Right. Don't put them up against each other. Talk shit about them. They're successful women. And it's the same thing dealing with gay and Republican, as you were saying earlier. You know, you got Ron DeSantis in Florida wearing heels and this bitch is saying you can't have a drag show. Uh, confusing, <laughs> isn't it? Confusing. But yeah, she that can is wear a mixed, her heels. So yeah, I that is a mixed important. message. Yes, a very mixed message and an ugly shoe. But <laughs> it is important. It is important to find the humor in it. And I also think that, you know, you're not going to be for everybody. So don't try to please everybody. You know, mm. stay in your lane, mind your business and have a good time. And that's yeah. what I'm all about. That's what I've been. Yeah. So the trick is, I come from old school where you had to call a bitch to their face, you know? Mm -hmm. And nowadays, if you say it online, that doesn't bother me. Yeah, that, yeah. That, that's child's play, honey. That, that don't mean nothing. <laughs> well, also, you're from New Orleans, too, right? Yes, yes. So I'll, take I know. Right, I'll take off my earrings. I'll take off my earrings. Yes, exactly. Yes. I know y'all don't play. That's like New York with, like, more more gumbo. You know what I'm saying? Like it's, true. It's, it's a whole, it's very similar vibe. New Yorkers would just be like, look, I don't like you. Get out of my face. Like, we don't do the smiling and the, you know, mm. the L.A. No, thing. No reason. Yeah. No reason. And I spent, you know, I spent, I grew up in New Orleans and then spent 10, 15 years in New York City. So that alone will then make you into a lethal bitch. I was having this conversation <laughs> with someone the other day. Is that, you know, when you're in New, in New York and there's all that scaffolding and it's a rainy day and you're seeing a good block away some bitch with an umbrella and mm -hmm. you're thinking, what's she going to do when she gets to that scaffolding? Because that's the skill set. You can't keep it open. If you do, you're an asshole. But right. if you close it and get everybody wet, you're a bitch. So you've got to strategically know how to do it. And the <laughs> only way you know how to do it is if you are a true New Yorker. Mm -hmm. It's a challenge. Yeah, it's an yeah. obstacle course. And yeah. throw in drunk on top of that. Yeah, then it's even worse. <laughs> well, also, you're right, because people who move to New York City, they don't have to be from. Like, I always say, if you survived in New York for like 20 minutes, you can call yourself yeah. a New Yorker without someone yeah, like yeah. murdering you, mugging you, <laughs> you know. <laughs> You're a New Yorker Girl, after 20 minutes. If you got past the apartment check, you are a New Yorker. <laughs> exactly. That is so true. And you know, you talk about the uh, idea of people being so offended now. I think the social media yeah. thing is a big part of that, obviously, like the internet, yeah. right? But when it comes to like the most famous comedians, uh, Carlin, Richard Pryor, Joan Rivers, oh, of course, because people forget about the art of stand up, which is why I think you differentiated yourself in season six when you won, because it was those one liners, the fast, but they were thoughtful, like really smart responses. Yeah. But um, we find humor, comedians, in the darkest situations, right? How yes. do you balance that? How do you balance like pushing the boundary and also making sure like people aren't like, you know, mad and waiting for you backstage after oh, the show? Well, well, I think that if no one's mad, then you're not doing your job. I mean, right. I really think now there are some 
very, as I would say, clean comedians, that their mm -hmm. material is based in this and their right. world. And that's lovely. And there, there is an art to it. So it's not to say that's right or that's wrong. I just think that, you know, you have to find a humor, maybe as a gay person, maybe as a drag queen, uh, maybe as an effeminate man, you know, that I already, I'm already laughing. You know, mm -hmm. I take nothing to that point. I mean, I have always said that I've been called worse by better, you know? So anybody that's got something to say, it doesn't affect me on that level, mm -hmm. but I just wish more people understood that you have to find the humor in all of it, you know? Right, and right. that, as I said, I'm the biggest joke there is. I'm coming on stage, we're doing a show, hour, hour and a half. Let's just laugh at ourselves and the world we live in, you know? Mm -hmm. And because of the fact that I do come from Drag Race to the world, uh, or was brought to the world with this platform uh, from Drag Race, is that, you know, I'm a specific audience. People kind of know what they're getting into when they come to see me. They know what it's about, you know? And it's your job to be a ruthless cunt when you're up there. You know, that's <laughs> what they want to hear. You know, I can't be up there, you know, saying nice, sweet things and they go, what the hell? happened to that bitch like yeah. that's not what it is um but also it's 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 my observation so it's not so much trying to be um political or to be problematic you go hey i thought it and if i thought it probably a couple of other people thought the same way too mm -hmm. so it's it's what it is but the trick is to make sure it's funny you know it's not just throwing out statements it's to have the humor within it uh that people miss out on and that's where context matters uh if you were at the show and let's say you just film a punchline it doesn't work if you don't hear the setup if you don't understand the context of what started the actual joke right. and that's where the madness comes in with people nowadays wanting to cancel and saying this bothers me well do you even know what we were talking about do you know what the lead up to that was do you know the situation no no and no but they love to jump to conclusions because yeah. that's what social fucking media so um yeah. Yeah, you've got to you've got to just steer clear of it and realize that if you're if you're putting something out into the world, it has to be your your voice, so to speak, and coming out of your mouth. You know, a, a text, a tweet, uh, a comment, it gets convoluted. So hearing it from your mouth is really the best way to hear it. So mm -hmm. that's why I say, come come see me live. Right, right. Well, it is, it's a great observation too when it comes to the whole art of writing. As I mentioned, when it comes to Joan, who we, will, we, we talk about so endearingly in this conversation, I watched that documentary on her and how she oh. was melodical, uh, like methodical with the card catalog and the jokes oh, yeah. and you know they all had a meaning and she knew when she yeah. wrote them and that's the art form that i think people don't realize that's involved you know you're not just up there saying a bunch of vulgarities you know they're thoughtful no, it's, things. It's, it's, your, it's your bag of tricks and it's your bag of tricks that you figured out and then you know most of it is a lot of the time shuffling and shuffling what's going to work within this moment i mean because you start out with a script of course i often say when you go on the road you start out with more material than you ever could imagine mm -hmm. you don't know what's going to land you don't know what's going to hit sometimes midway through you've taken something out and realized oh i know how to twist this and make this better or something culturally is happening in the world at that time. Right. You know, we plot and plan this tour six months ago. And so what's happened between then and now, so much shit has happened. And also what's going to happen between now and February when I start or when I'm out still in 2024, late 2024, more stuff will be happening in the world. So adapting is quite important. Um, also listening, listening to the world, listening to people. You know, you know when they're catching on and when they're cackling at something, you know, I'm on to something. Let mm -hmm. me elaborate on this as opposed to just going pop, 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 pop. No, because it's not all rehearsed. It's really in the moment and you get the groove of it, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, that's amazing. And that's, and for you on this tour, it's going to be 60 different locations across the U.S., I believe. Well, that's just uh, the Canada. start. That's our first leg. Yeah, our first leg is USA and Canada. Um, and so we start uh, February 12th in San Diego and we go through America and Canada first. And then obviously we'll be announcing dates throughout the 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 world and i say that because our our last tour was um 129 shows in 27 mm. countries and 99 cities so i got a lot to cover with this one wow. but they're obviously announcing it in chunks because of our you know our world that we live in so right wow. now it's 60 days starting with american again so i know some bitch from brazil or peru <laughs> is going to come up in the comment section and say hey, what about this that ain't world and what about this now it's the start of it. So let me get through these first six, <laughs> but we'll have the other ones announced really soon. So you're basically like, but it will, you're like, so there's Beyonce and then there's Taylor Swift and then there's, <laughs> and there's Bianca, maybe no, I mean, that's a world tour. Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. I got, I want to know who from my team paid you for that one. <laughs> that check better clear, honey. Oh, I will. You took a check from us? <laughs> no, I... Stupid, stupid me. 
I was laughing because I had told someone other, you know, they said, yo, you had some time off. And I go, well, you know, there there was a couple girls you might know, you know, Taylor and Beyonce, they were on the road. And I thought, let, let them have a shot. Exactly. Let them have a chance. Right. Let them have a moment. And then there's this other bitch that you might have heard of Madonna. Let her have a little oh, something. I forgot about her, child. You know, let them have a little something. And then I'll come out and do my thing. You know, yeah, let them make wise. some money. Very let them make, I tried to. I tried to be good to the girls. Well, I hope I your tickets, honey. I hope your tickets are... <laughs> Are not as expensive. Oh, I mean, that, make no, your money, no. but not fifty five thousand. I just saw like no, a pair girl. of tickets for fifty thousand for Madonna. Crazy. What fifty thousand dollars? I can't. Well, first of all, if I had fifty five, that's the last thing. I mean, no offense. I mean, I, I'm a Madonna fan. I'm a right. you know, I like Taylor Swift. I like Beyonce. You know, I get it. <laughs> I don't like the fans. I like right. the individuals. Mm -hmm. But I can't imagine spending that much money. I just yeah. can't. Well, girls spend that much money to go on Drag Race. Well, listen. I mean, I I don't want to tell people about spending money either. But that is just a bit. That's like that um, like that Arab chic money. You know, what I mean, that's a whole other. That's some like you know, <laughs> come do my birthday Dubai. party for three million. Yeah, that kind of thing. Yeah, yeah, very yeah, yeah, different. Yeah thing well yeah. you know i um also have to then just uh, parlay right into the fact that you actually are again more than a drag performer a great brilliant comedian but also history making performer oh, with I'm history. Oh. history making well as uh the the first dragged person for performer to sell out wembley and carnegie hall i believe oh, is yeah, what well, i read well, 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 those were great things that I got to do. You know, uh, uh, Wembley Rain is pretty amazing in the UK. And we had the opportunity to do it la the tour before last. Mm -hmm. I actually, and it's, you know, it's one of those things when you're, when you're in the moment and people are, are, you know, basically shaping your career and say, hey, would you like to do that? I say yes to everything, you know, because mm -hmm. everything has led me to it. It led me to something good. And if by chance it's a horrible situation, it becomes a great joke or a great story I could use later. Right, so, right. There is no such thing as bad sex, you know? <laughs> You'll end up using it somewhere. <laughs> so in the end, I've said yes to all of these things, which has just been kind of amazing to get to do. You know, uh, first of all, I didn't expect to be doing drag this long, much less doing drag 10 years after Drag Race. So now mm. I think I'm going into my 28th or 29th year of drag, which is insane, mm. but how fortunate and lucky to get to do those things, you know? And I think the only way you can appreciate Carnegie Hall or Wembley Arena is when you have worked in a bar where there was two people on a Monday night at 1 a.m., that's when you really, really appreciate the opportunities that you're mm. given. And it doesn't mean that you'll never go back to that because it could happen at any point mm -hmm. and any, don't get too fancy. It could happen at any point. But so in those moments, you do realize you have to mentally treat it the same way. And that's how I looked at it. I didn't think, oh, my God, there's, you know, 15,000 people out here. I just thought I got to I got to pretend like no one's there like it is on a Monday night when I worked right. at the Ritz in New York. Right. You know, you you can't get wrapped up in the madness. But how lucky and grateful to get to do it. Yeah. I you mean, didn't think you'd be doing it this long. That's amazing because you're, this is no. your sixth, like a sixth, sixth tour, tour yeah. right? Story. You know, well, you know, I think drag has an expiration. <laughs> I think, you know, if I would have been hustling like I did for all those years, I don't know if I'd still be hustling at that rate. So Drag Race came at a really great time and, um, and, and it kind of opened up a lot of doors for me. But also I was, you know, strong in my thoughts and opinions of what I wanted to do. And I always wanted to tour. And some of my friends have done really well with television and film work. And, and I kind of veered in the other direction. I had always been on the road. Mm. So it's kind of, you figure out what you want, which I always say, I don't know what I want, but I know what I don't want. Mm -hmm. And and what I've always enjoyed was a live audience, uh, sometimes dead, I'll even take that, but <laughs> an audience that's there and interacting with people. And so that's why I'm super stoked about getting on the road again. Yeah, well, and your interactions, of course, with the crowd, as we already talked about, are really pretty much a big part of your trademark. Oh, uh, yeah. With your, yeah, so do we, will, we, will we be seeing a lot of that? Oh, yeah, yes, yes, but I'm not going to exploit myself like Matt Reif and put it all over the internet. No, but yes, we do. <laughs> We do have, we do have always those moments. And I tell you, that's, those are the moments that you live for. People give you so much, whether it be great or shit. And mm. either way, you make magic with it. So yeah. I, I thoroughly enjoy those moments because people are fucking ruthless. They really, really are. So mm. that's always, always a staple in the show, of course. Yes. And how much of that, and I mean, this is not to get right into your craft, but you know, sure. the way the secrets, but how well a lot of it has to be spontaneous because you don't know what they're going to say but do right. you have like this like this list of like comebacks in your mind is like it's just what you say. think it's just what you think in the moment you know like you can sit back and, and some of the stuff people give you they either give you too much information or not enough information and 
you have to just roll with it. And mm. I think that's that's that was a part of my childhood. That was a part of being gay uh, in high school, you know, yeah. being the survival. One. Yes, yeah. it's, it's just your, your instinct, so to speak, you know, mm -hmm. and it's all, you know, so I live for those moments. And those are the moments I, I enjoy more than having to script something, you know, like when I'm yeah. in a play or I've done stuff, I always get worried I'm going to forget my lines, mm -hmm. you know, but mm -hmm. when I'm doing my own show, you rearrange things as you want, as you like, you know, the path, you know, where you're headed to. Sometimes you include all of it. Sometimes you don't, but that's the fun part of it. You know, with theater, you're a little more restricted. Mm -hmm. So I just like those moments with, with the average person, you know, I say the average person, bitch, me without makeup. That's what I <laughs> is those people that are there to support you and they will cackle with you. So it's yeah. the best. It's the best. That's amazing. That's a great trademark. And that's why, like you saw my friend, my friend was like, yeah, I love, you know, that she, that <laughs> she roasts taste. people. That That's just like, yeah. Well, He's listen, I know taste. you, uh, <laughs> he does. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, so I know like you are busy and I know that we have 15 minutes together today or so, but I do want to ask you a couple more quick things. Sure. One, yeah. Well, one is advice you would have for, uh, up and coming drag performers who've seen what you've done and what you're doing and they want to maybe follow on that success. What's your advice for them? I would say don't do drag because it's a trap. That's the first thing. Uh, <laughs> find a real job, bitch. No, um, I would say, you know, stay in your lane. Stay in your lane. Find what you like and then roll with it, you know? And and it's amazing because for, for what I've been doing is you have to have an act. You have to have something to offer the people. We can all look cute in an Instagram filtered photo, but you got to give us a little something mm. more. Whether it be, you know, in music or in comedy or, you know, there's so many avenues that you can go. So many avenues that haven't even been explored yet. But just find your craft and find what you enjoy because your passion is what's going to drive you further. You know, mm. drag, all of this is fine, but it, it's the hustle, you know, and you have to hustle in your lane. If not, you're going to miss out on a lot of opportunities. Mm. So I would say, I was that and, and don't be a lazy bitch. Don't be a lazy bitch. Put the work in. Put the work yes. in. Yes. Absolutely. Yeah. Great advice. And lastly, what I wanted to talk to you about again, I, I she must be like gonna visit me from the dead or something. But Joan, <laughs> Joan, 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 because I have to tell you, I was so fascinated by when she did the episode of In Bed with Joan with you. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And in that moment, I saw these the starstruckness, but you handled it very well. But I saw oh, she you were like myself. going like, yeah. I could see you like, <laughs> holy shit, like, how did I do this? Well, so what was that like? Just a little bit of your own words. Like, what was it like in that moment? Because she's a master. And oh, you were there she's brilliant. With her. Brilliant. And, and, you know, if you've ever lived in New York, you were fortunate enough to see Joan on the street or at an event. She was always at a Broadway opening. I had met her a couple of times. And I say met her, meaning she was gracious enough to take a picture and say hello. Mm -hmm. Always, always lovely. Um, and then I met a friend of hers uh, who used to write for her by a guy by the name of Tony Tripoli, a very funny comedian who called me up after Drag Race and said, do you want to do In Bed With Joan? And I was like, sign me the fuck up. Wow. So um, I got to do it. I was the second to last because after me was Leanne Rhymes. Mm. Uh, but- That's a strange. <laughs> That's interesting. Was. You know, you know, the day it, earlier in the day was that guy Neve from uh, Catfish on MTV. Okay. He was right before me. Then there was me. Then there was Leanne Rhymes. Whatever. So mm. nonetheless, um, to be there it, amongst it, we were supposed to film. It was 17 minutes or 20 minutes is what we were allotted to film. And we ended up filming over an hour mm. of us just fucking cackling and talking yeah. shit about everybody. And, and all I remember is, you know, obviously uh, loving her for so long, but she was also extremely gracious. She was gracious in that moment. She could have just rolled on through the interview, but she didn't. And she was listening and having a great time. And when she first laughed at something, all I kept thinking was, keep going, faggot, keep going. Mm. Don't get proud like, you know, you're that. <laughs> 11 year old boy going she's laughing keep mm, going so yeah. it was like having sex with a girl just keep going she's cackling <laughs> it'll uh, be over soon but, it'll be over soon yeah yes yes it'll be over wow. soon but it was um it was a lovely experience and um you know i wouldn't trade it for anything i mean how lucky how fortunate yeah it's fascinating to watch and if anyone has not seen it please check it oh. out on youtube it is in joan with bed with bianca del rio and it's it literally i i go to it sometimes and i watch it just to feel good some days <laughs> it's that funny it's that funny. oh good well, i'm glad you enjoyed it i'm yeah, glad it's you really enjoyed great. it absolutely and i want everybody else to check it out too so in closing i will just share once again that the highly anticipated tour that you have will be kicking off uh february 12th i believe is the date Correct. Yes. and yes. in new york city or no san diego uh, was it new san york? diego 
in right. San Diego okay. and I'm making my way around. So for all ticket information, all dates uh, and our additional dates that will be added will all be on my website, thebiancadelrio.com. And you can check it out there. Or you can also check out all of my Instagram or Twitter. Or do we even call it Twitter anymore? Oh, where we so. update as we add more cities uh, as we go along. But we do oh, kick wonderful. off in February. Okay, well, wow, that's awesome. Everyone go out there and check out Bianca Del Rio in person. And this has truly been a pleasure. Now I'm not so afraid of you anymore. Good, so. you shouldn't be. You shouldn't be, bitch. We're close now. We're okay, close. we sisters now. We sisters. That's it. That's it. That's All it. Right. Well, Great it's a pleasure. With you. Thank you so much. We'll take care of yourself. Thank you, and babe. we'll see you soon. All right. Bye bye. All right. Now. Take care.